Pets. I was completely wrong when it came to me filming a video back in the day. Well, I actually did post it. Um, I think it was around like 2017 Christmas time and I posted a similar video to this. But I was very young and naive and I mentioned to give a pet for the holidays. I'm 31 years old now, I'm still learning, but I do know that when you give a pet for the holidays or for birthdays or for a gift in general, you're sending the wrong message. Never dump an animal on someone else because those animals end up in the shelter. And it's so sad to even think like, well, some people will get a pet or say a dog, a puppy for the holidays. Down the line, that couple ends up having a baby and then having another baby and then they just get rid of their dog because they think it's an, a burden on their household. They think like, oh, well, he's very expensive now. His vet bills are very expensive. We have two kids. We can't do this. So, you know, he's got to go. I have seen that happen numerous times and it is so freaking sad. So most of the pets that are in shelters are older and they never get adopted. Also around Easter time. And I remember being a kid and my aunts would get bunnies and rabbits as a gift and once when um, Easter was done they couldn't wait to just set the rabbits free because they just were over them you know in my head back then I used to think like what the heck is wrong with people because I've always been an animal lover and I was like if I was to be gifted a bunny I would keep it you know as long as it lives and most people don't think like me so most people aren't animal lovers and they think of other things. So long story short, pets are not gifts. Pets are a discussion that that one person needs to have either with themselves. Like when I adopted Milo, I told my boyfriend, you know, I want to adopt a cat. I have waited a very long time for this. I love cats. I know that, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money with, you know, the vet, food, but I have money saved. You know, I've been saving for this and I really would like to adopt a rescue cat. And of course we did. And I feel very lucky to be Milo's cat mom because I feel like if it was anybody else that adopted him, they probably would have put him to sleep by now because Milo does have a rare disease that my boyfriend and I are working on getting him um, the help that he needs, the health care that he needs. So we're giving him a second chance at life. And I don't think a lot of people would would have done what we have done. So that's what I mean by talking it out with yourself or just knowing that there is roadblocks when it comes to having or owning a pet or adopting a pet. Do not give pets to your kids for any occasion. Do not give them as a gift. They're not a gift, they're a living being. And it teaches your kids the wrong message. It teaches them that animals are material item and they're not. Clothes for adults. Clothes for adults can be tricky. Now, if you know the size of your wife or husband or your kids, why not go for it? And if you know their style, go for it. But when it comes to adult friends or other random family members that are adults, I feel like kids are a little bit more lenient when it comes to like, oh, here's a shirt. They'll just wear it because they're kids. But adults are very different when it comes to buying clothes for because at a certain age, you already know your style, you know your size, you know the size that you like to wear. So even if you have, say you're a size five, but you like to wear size eight, you know, you know what you like basically. And you know yourself when it comes to your own personal style. So when you give another adult a clothing item, say you gave someone a sweater and that person hates wearing white and they hate wearing knitted sweaters, but now they feel obligated to have to wear that sweater around that person that gave it to them because they feel guilty, obligated, that they have to wear it because they got it as a gift and you don't want that person to feel bad because you're not wearing their gift. It's just a whole big ball of guilt. So the best thing that you can do when it comes to gifting clothes for the holidays is getting a gift card. So say you know that one person likes Express, get them Express gift card. They can go in the store, pick out the size, the personal style that they like, and you don't have to worry if they're going to like what you bought them or if they're going to wear it or if it fits. All you really have to give is the gift card and they can do whatever they please with it. And obviously it doesn't have to be express, it can be whatever that person likes. Say they like Target clothes, give them a Target gift card or Aritzia, whatever 
clothing store they shop at, give them the gift card instead of actual clothing items. Trust me, you're gonna save yourself a ton of time and you're gonna save yourself a lot of stress. Perfume and candles. This is another one that can cause a huge headache, literally, <laughs> when you are getting a different scent for people. I used to get candles and I used to get perfume for my birthday and I used to get candles for the for holiday seasons. I used to give it away, all that stuff I used to give it away to people that I used to work with. I'm like, you want this perfume, you want this candle? Because for me, now I know not everybody's like me, but I get very, very nauseous with certain scents. Flower perfume or flower candles, I cannot do. I get really, really nauseous. It honestly feels like car sick nauseous. It's horrible. You know those fall scents like at um, Yankee Candle and Bath and Body Works? They smell good when you're smelling them in the store, but the minute you put them in your house, for me, it's just so overpowering and it literally makes me want to throw up. With that all being said, I am the worst person to purchase these gifts for because I end up giving them away because I just feel nauseous 24-7 in a house with like those plug-ins or a candle burning. If you know someone that does like candles but you're unsure of the scent, you can always opt out for like fancy looking unscented candles where they can just burn. I used to have a couple unscented candles for emergencies, like if the power went out or whatever. Those are the candles that I could burn and they won't give me a headache. But when it comes to perfume, I would opt out for a gift card. Gift card to Sephora, um, Kohl's, wherever they sell perfume, get a gift card because I'm telling you, just like clothes, everyone has their own preference when it comes to scent as well. So keep that in mind so you don't waste your time, your money, and you're gonna be less stressed. Which I think being less stressed is the best thing around the holidays. If you could find gifts that cause you less stress, that's priceless then. Because I remember being so stressed out around the holidays on what to give people, and that caused me more stress rather than like how much money am I spending. More than three toys. Now I know a lot of you guys are not gonna agree with me with this one. And I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna tell me that I have no say because I'm not a mom. But I have a niece and nephew, so I know a two or thing about kids. Especially nowadays, like it's not like when we were younger um, where I used to love playing with Barbie. I used to love playing with the Bratz dolls. Those were like my go-to toys. Oh, like Bop It, that was a cool toy. So of course, I'm a 90s kid and we didn't have iPhones, we didn't have tablets, so all we really had was toys to play with. So around Christmas time, we would get toys, obviously to share, because I grew up with four sisters, but we would get toys and it was a great time. Nowadays, I have seen my sister waste so much money on toys that the kids will play with on Christmas day and that's it. Those toys are in the corner of their room and you're gonna have to declutter them like I don't know, around next holiday so you could fit more toys in their room, which is another cycle that happens every year with the holidays. And of course, with other people given toys as well, you just end up with a room filled of toys that your kids are not playing with because they're too busy playing on the iPad, they're too busy doing something else with electronics rather than playing with physical toys. So I think when it comes to toys, Three is more than enough. I think anything you know above three would be too much and you're gonna have to declutter it, you're gonna waste your money and you're probably gonna complain to them that they're not playing with their toys. It's best to step back from buying a bunch of toys. I have seen with other minimalist moms the little trick that they do, which I think is great. When it comes to toys, if your child, say you have one child and they have 10 toys, put five away and just keep five out. They'll play with those five for about six months, put those other five away and take out the other five that you put away last time. So it's like new toys every time. So they don't get sick of having everything, like an abundance of toys around them. So it's something new for them to play with even though they had it before, but they just don't remember because it was like, I feel like when it comes to like six months or three months with kids, like that time frame is longer than, you know, for us adults. So when they see those toys again, they you know, they want to play with them and you can keep swapping it. You can keep doing that like toy schedule. I actually do that with Milo. Milo owns four toys. So I put his tunnel, he's got like a cat tunnel. I put that away for about a month and then I take it back out and then he plays with it again. He goes crazy for it. Because I find when the cat tunnel was just sitting out, he wasn't really caring for it. But once when I started that little swapping the toys out schedule, he goes nuts for it and 
it makes me happy knowing that all right he's getting use out of the toys that i actually bought him and i'm not saying that kids are the same as animals i'm just putting it in a perspective where i understand and obviously i'm not a mom i'm a cat mom but i'm not a real mom so i just think that that was a brilliant idea if you do end up with a lot of toys because you can't really control what family members are giving your kids as much as you say it they're not going to listen i know my mom does not listen to a word i say when it comes to gifts or toys or anything like that it's like i tell her i don't want a birthday gift and she shows up with a birthday gift parents grandparents they just don't listen they just do what they want to do so the best thing to do if you end up with a lot of toys do that swap out schedule every three months or six months and you know put 10 away keep 10 out or put five away and keep the other five out however many toys you have and also donate toys that they really don't care for because there's other kids in the world that could use those something you really can't afford this is huge i remember working with so many bougie women back then and i'm not putting them on blast but i'm putting them on blast but i remember these women saying how they want to get you know they were going in debt to get like their friends and family members gifts because they wanted to make it look like they were doing well in life and they're making money they're making good money even though they weren't making good money, they're just literally putting themselves in debt for the holidays. So that's a huge problem within the US is when the holidays come, we think that, you know, us adults, we need to show off and show up. And it's sad. It is very sad that most of us still think like that. Even till this day, after everything that happened with COVID, you would think people would be a little bit more smarter with their money, but that's usually not the case. <laughs> so when it comes to a gift and you know you can't afford it, do not get in debt for that gift for that person. Okay, just be patient and wait. I know I probably sound like a broken record because you probably heard it before but patience is key when it comes to big purchases or unnecessary purchases there's a reason why you can't afford that particular gift right now everything happens for a reason so if you're looking to buy someone the new iphone but you don't make enough and you don't have enough in savings or even if you have enough in savings but your savings is not for that don't do it, okay? You will regret it. I know if that person needs a phone, if they need a phone, they don't technically need the most newest and expensive phone. You can still do with an older iPhone and I'm sure it works perfectly fine, okay? Do not do things to show off or to show that you're doing well in life because I'm gonna tell you a big secret. No one cares. <laughs> no one cares if you're making a ton of money or if you're known at the family gatherings for the one that gives the best gifts. No one cares if you're gonna show up one year with cheaper gifts or more expensive gifts. And if they do care, then maybe that's a talk within your family that you need to have because being materialistic is something that can hold you back from a lot of good things in life. Fancy packaging to wrap gifts in. I have seen people go all out with wrapping their gifts. And the reason why I say it's not worth it, it's not just because I'm a minimalist, but there are other ways to decorate a gift that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. For example, say you pay 20 to $30 to wrap one beautiful gift for you know a family member. You know, it looks aesthetically pleasing, it goes with your outfit, it just goes with your whole theme. That stuff's gonna end up in the garbage. Like your money is going to end up in the garbage. Literally, you can just take $20 out of your wallet and just throw it away because that's where it's going. Now, there are so many cheaper ways, so many DIYs on how to make your gifts look cute, like with wrapping them. You can use what's out there in nature to decorate a gift. If you remember covering your school books back in the day, I remember like we had to cover our school books with this. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. It's like a brown wrapping paper. And it's very soft and I've seen people take that same book wrapping paper, wrap gifts and put, you know, a little bit of glue in the middle with the gift being all wrapped. And then they get like a little piece of the pine tree, like um, you take a little snip of the leaf and you put it in the middle. I'll put a little examples here because I know I'm probably not explaining it right. Yeah, this costs less than $2 to make and I think it's beautiful, 10 times beautiful than going all out. And I think it means more when you actually put effort into it instead of have someone else do the work for you. Again, to each his own, but I just think it is not worth it for fancy packaging, to pay for fancy packaging. Because like I said, you're just taking your wallet and you're just throwing it away. Who cares, right? 
And the last thing is cards. <laughs> Definitely thing of the past. I hate to even put this in here because I know some of you guys like getting cards or reading them and um, or decorating with them. My mother loves decorating with like old Christmas cards. That is what she uses for decoration. She don't use anything else. She just uses her Christmas cards around the house, which is fine. It is perfectly fine. I know a lot of cards are sentimental and that is fine. But the cards I'm talking about are the cards that people just give out and it just says from Kira. Like it doesn't have a message that, you know, you poured your heart and soul into it. It doesn't say anything. I have seen some people put those cards, well, it just says from Sarah and they put them on each gift and that's it. And it really is pointless. And like I said, cards are a thing in the past because we do live in the future now. Everything is digital. And like I said, I'm not against cards, but if you're gonna write a message in them, if you're gonna say something sweet, you're gonna put a gift card in the within the card, sure, go for it. But if you're gonna add cards, like the little cards or even the big cards on each gift, you're literally just wasting your time and money once again, because people are not gonna read them. They're gonna open them, see if there's money in it, if there's no money or there's no, no other gift in those cards, they're probably just gonna chuck them away at the end of the night. And I have seen people do that at my old jobs. There was no money or there was nothing in those cards, they just chuck them away. With all of that being said, it's iffy with the cards, okay? It's like, you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. And if you are gonna do it, put some passion into it. If it's for your mom, do it for special people, okay? Like, do it for someone special in your life. Don't just do it for everybody, because then it's gonna lose its meaning. Because cards are supposed to be meaningful, and I feel like people just treat them like, all right, we're just gonna throw them away, because they lost their meaning, because they just people just pass them out like they're lottery tickets. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season and I will catch you in the next one.